Hi there, welcome to No Nonsense Whiskey. My name is Vim PF, and on today's episode we're going to be covering a bourbon, which is something I haven't done for a little bit of time. And I've been kind of neglecting the bourbons this year as much as I did the previous year. But uh, this one was a sample given to me by my good friend Gus. Uh, I don't think I would have tried this without the sample, so I think it's uh, congratulations to him for sending that to me. But it's in my British Bourbon Society glass as well. So if you haven't heard of those guys, and especially if you're in the UK, go and check them out on Facebook. Absolutely brilliant group if you're into your bourbons in any way, shape or form. They are just brilliant, brilliant at sourcing stuff, great source of information. This one here today is the Jim Beam Signature Craft 12 year old. Now I have covered the Jim Beam white label on the channel before, link up here. And I didn't really think it was that great, so that's the reason why I wouldn't have picked this up normally. But it isn't in fact just the standard Jim Beam aged over 12 years. The whole point of the Signature Craft range is that their 7th generation master distiller, Fred No, has decided to experiment a little bit with the standard formula with a little bit of finishes and things like that. So we've got the 12 year old for example, we've also got a quarter cask in there and a rare brandy finish plus a few others. This one here in the UK has been discontinued now, I'm pretty sure it's discontinued worldwide, but it was roughly 30 to 35 pounds so it was, it's getting on for an expensive bourbon but it's really in, in the same sort of realms as your standard scotches over here you know you, anything below 50 quid is going to be of a certain quality when you get down to about 20 25 it starts to drop off a little bit but you know 30 to 35 pounds you can't really sniff at it's also 43 percent, so that's always a good sign but let's crack into the whiskey and see what we've got with it shall we obviously the color is amazing you know it's it's a bourbon, so it's all natural colour, nothing's added to that. Let's have a go on the nose. This thing's got a huge nose on it. It's extremely oaky, loads of vanillas. These are the kind of things you expect from a, a bourbon, new American oak. It imparts a lot of vanilla flavours into the, into the whiskey. But you're getting bags of it, that kind of 12 years sitting there in Kentucky. It, there's a reason why they don't tend to do so many aged bourbons and that's because they they work really well at about three to six maybe even eight years after a while they start to get a bit over oaked but this hasn't happened with this bad boy so it's it's been sat in a decent part of the warehouse it doesn't get too hot and too cold but on top of all of that it's so much spice I can smell it it's like cinnamon almost let's try a bit on the palate Mm. Wow, this is a huge spicy finish to it. It doesn't even wait until you swallow the liquid and it's already starting its kind of spicy finish. Massive peppery notes, but apart from that it's kind of that same oaky vanilla-y notes you're getting from the, from the nose, straight on the palate. Really, really nice. Really, really nice. I'm enjoying that a lot. Now I wouldn't call it a casual sipper, it's got a bit more of a punch than that. It's definitely got a much bigger punch than the standard Jim Beam white label, which I found a bit sickly, didn't really get on with it that much, tasted a bit too watery and a bit cheap, whereas this is the complete opposite of that. In fact, side by side, I don't think I would be able to tell this is actually indicative of Jim Beam. There's a, there's a few Jim Beams out there, you've got the kind of the white label, the devil's cart and versions of that. This is kind of pushing into the premium side of things and I think that's a really good place for it to sit. Now, I've seen a few people say that it's uh, a little bit expensive for them and you can get equivalent amazing stuff in, uh, in America especially for the same price because it's there it's roughly $35 as well so we're paying the, uh, the little bit extra on the pounds. But in the UK the bourbon offerings aren't fantastic. We've got some good stuff for sure but the prices are quite high. Now when this was available, when you can get it for 30 to 35 pounds, it would have been a pretty good buy. Right now, discontinued, I'm pretty sure on the secondary market it's going to start going up a little bit. I wouldn't get involved in that if I were you, but if you can see a bottle of it for a relatively good price, I say a thumbs up. I have covered the Jim Bre is that there. We've got the 12 year old 